Historically, black women haven't ever been listened to. They're perceived as uh, dramatic when they go and they explain the pain that they're uh, experiencing because a lot of healthcare providers believe black women don't feel pain the same way white women do. Now more than ever, we get to write our own narrative and to uh, make sure that we are the ones writing our own stories and we get the representation and the support that we need. I'm the host of Smoke Break. Smoke Break is a video podcast here to help you kick your tobacco habit, powered by Interact for Health. I'm here with Crystal Brown. How are you doing? I'm fine today, Kayla. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for joining us and being here. So can you tell us a little bit about what you do and who you work with? I am Crystal Brown, community health worker with Queens Village in Cradle, Cincinnati. I pretty much help women get connected to different resources within their community, as well as giving them information and education about safe sleep and reproductive life planning. Crystal, thank you again for being here and um, coming to join us on Smoke Break. So I know a little bit about what Queens Village does through some of the work I've done personally with you all, mm -hmm. but um, how does Queens Village really support black women here in Cincinnati? So Queens Village is an initiative of Cradle Cincinnati, which is a nonprofit organization in the race to help to reduce the, the rate of infant mortality in Hamilton County. So um, our part is to help black women find ways to reduce stress within Cincinnati. So some of the programs that we offer are free, most of the programs that we offer are free for women. And some of the programs are yoga, mindfulness. We've even had a wellness journey. We actually have a, a new wellness journey beginning next month. You can find that at Queens Village Cincinnati on Facebook. It's a six week journey. You'll get work, you'll get um, tools to use throughout the workshop and beyond to be able to help yourself throughout your life journey of trying to quit tobacco usage. That's what's up, that's what's up. I love to hear that there are programs specifically to help black women in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. So through some of your work, what are some stress points that are unique to black women in this city um, that's contributing to us having such a high infant mortality rate? There's many factors um, of stress. One can be their living condition, their job maybe being overworked and underpaid. A lot of moms maybe have teen boys. That is the main thing that I've hear now um, just due to some of the situations that's going on with the police. And even with yourself going out, um, you have to worry, will I get stopped? or why do I get nervous just because I see the police um, behind me? Mm -hmm. But other than that, even within the medical um, situation, sometimes we hear moms say they're not being listened to when they go in to complain about different pains or different things when they have their um, prenatal appointments. Mm. So let's talk about this. So black women are not being heard by their healthcare professionals or their doctors. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of like expand on that a little bit? So say I go in and I say, um, oh, I've had this pain all night. They may kind of brush me off just due to thinking I'm seeking uh, payments mm. or just thinking, oh, I'll be okay. Your appointment is not until next week. We'll see you next week. Sometimes we do get brushed off like that as well. What are some ways that black women can insert ourselves better to get the proper care that we need for our, for our bodies and for our health? So the main thing you would need to do is make sure you're advocating for yourself and be well informed about what you're actually going through on your own. So it's okay to do your own research other than just listening to your doctor when you go to your appointment. As well as also, <coughs> excuse me, as well as also having an advocate with you, maybe someone if you're not so keen to speak up for yourself, having someone there that will speak up and say, hey doc, she said, you know, her side's been hurting all night. What can we do about this other than just saying she'll see the doctor next week or other than just saying, oh, that's normal for, for pregnancy. Actually having someone be there or actually being there and being stern about being seen, being heard, and being listened to. No, that's real. My friend, uh, she just had a baby. And the entire time, she was like, I'm feeling sick. I don't feel well. I'm getting mm -hmm. all this weight. And she, I was like, well, what is your doctor saying? She's like, they said, you know, it's it happens. Normal. It's normal. It happens. Mm -hmm. And then a 
like a week before she ended up having her baby. She ended up having her ch baby like two months early. Oh, goodness. They diagnosed her with preeclampsia, and then she was bedridden for the rest of her pregnancy. She had to stay in the hospital until oh, yeah. she had him. So, I mean, you know, just continuing, you know, to tell black women to advocate for ourselves when we're in mm -hmm. these spaces mm -hmm. because it's so necessary and it can save our life. Yes, it definitely can save your life. Does smoking contribute to um, high infant mortality rates? Is there a correlation between smoking and infant mortality within women? So the correlation that we can see and speak on as of right now is when mom smokes during pregnancy, there's a higher risk for complications during pregnancy. Also a risk for mom to deliver preterm, meaning baby will be delivered before the end of mom's second trimester. And baby can be at risk of being low birth weight. Mm, okay. Preterm birth is actually one of the leading factors in infant mortality as well. Oh, dang. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah, you know, we gotta keep the baby safe. Yeah, so there's that first hand, second hand, and third hand smoke as well. So even if mom quits during pregnancy but begins to smoke again when she has baby, you have to worry about second hand smoke. You have to worry about third hand smoke. So even if she's not holding baby when she's smoking, the smoke can still be in her clothes. So it's actually suggested that if they do smoke when they have baby at home, that they wear a jacket or a covering over their clothes and smoke outside. And then when they come in, make sure they wash their hands before interacting again with baby. Since I started, there has, I started in 2018 with Cradle Cincinnati. And from then until now, there has been a reduced rate of the infant mortality rate in Hamilton County. There's a slight decline, which is great, but there's still plenty of work to do. Um, as long as the community health workers and multiple supporters and multiple organizations um, come together, I think we will be able to continue to see that needle move in the right direction. And mm -hmm. what are some things that we can do to help black women heal? Heal from different traumas, um, heal from having to deal with oppressive systemic uh, racism, heal with having to confront, <coughs> overcome these obstacles that are unique to us. So I would say the first thing that they can do is to acknowledge what they need for themselves. So say my friend may feel like she needs to talk to someone every week, but I may feel like I just need to talk to someone once a month. So just find a group that actually fits for you. Do your research and see. Um, although there is Queens Village, I know there is maybe another organization that's out here in Cincinnati, but Queens Village is here to support black women in many ways. So please come and join us to feel free to um, relax, repower, and rise together.